So I uh, just got out of uh, Jojo Rabbit. And um, I, I'm, I'm in a little bit of a loss for words. I, I, okay, I'll, right off the bat, I, I really, really love that film. That was... Um, <laughs> I want to talk a lot about this film, but it's one of those things where there's a, a lot to digest. If I was going to suggest a movie that I think anyone should watch, this might be it. I don't use this lightly. I genuinely think that film was a work of art. I, oh, where do I, where can I begin? Okay, for those that don't know, Jojo Rabbit is... Ooh, gonna be a wobbly. He looks like you have to deal with a wobble. For those that don't know, Jojo Rabbit is the tale of a 10-year-old boy, German boy, growing up in the, basically the tail end of World War II in Germany. He is um, a radicalized uh, part of the Hitler Youth, and the first moments we see of him in the movie are him uh, essentially being trained to potentially join the army at some future point and this is where we learn a lot about the character of Jojo and leads to a lot of the inst pretty much the instigating incident if you want to use um you know terminology but we're also introduced very early on uh to Jojo's uh, imaginary friend Adolf Hitler played by uh Tika Watiti and I was going to say it's the role he was born to play, but you could clearly see he was having an absolute blast playing this. If you've seen the trailer, you've probably seen the major spoiler bit. But at the end of the base of the first act is when Jojo gets injured by a hand grenade and he's forced to abandon his pursuit of joining the Hitler Youth and potentially the... Um, the regular army to become, you know, a soldier and Jojo's goal of meeting Hitler. He's forced to confront that and then at the end of Act 1 is essentially Jojo meeting the Jewish girl hidden in the side cupboard and that's your inciting incident for the rest of the film. That really doesn't say that much about this film. This movie is got some brilliant character development. It's, it's more of a study on, like, humanity during a time of crisis even quite specifically the setting is it's never it's never specifically stated at the beginning of the film you know that the war is going on all the indications that the war is going strong until you finally, finally start seeing the hints that maybe things aren't going as well for germany and it's really telling that this is from the perspective of a young radicalized youth in Germany where the the state can't do any wrong. His imaginary friend Adolf Hitler is essentially the symbol of how a country can radicalize or propagandize their youth into the movement. So I mean let's just not get bogged down in the allegory. It's this is a very really well layered film and some exquisitely um told storytelling and it almost serves as a great piece on how to de-radicalize someone someone who has been throffed up into like this murderous rage you know the uh, I, you know the only good drew is a dead jew you know and the whole the literal demonization of a people for the express purpose of othering someone so they can dehumanize them and then that can lead to someone doing atrocious acts but you're probably not here for the in-depth cultural analysis but i'll still go back to the fact that this feels like art it it's not only is it one of the most beautifully shot pieces of cinema i've seen in recent times like the cinematography the framing the shots the shot construction on a technical level this is beautiful but the storytelling is also beautiful and deeply moving and it's full of humor it's full of tragedy it's, it also exemplifies the horrors of war at the same time and the great thing is it is through this lens of a 12 year old boy caught in the middle of a conflict you know it's, i don't want to say it's a coming of age tale but you could probably layer that in there as well you know a boy coming to terms with his own 
youth and taking the next step to adulthood. I can't say too much more without giving away one of the quite possibly the biggest gut punches in the movie and it is brilliant. It is it is moving and it is you just I, I don't want to say too much about it because I definitely don't want to spoil this. Um, you don't probably have to see this in the cinemas, but I'd, I'd rather recommend it. We need more movies like this. I mean, I love, I love my Marvel films. I love my popcorn cinema. But when people crap on about how you know modern day th filmmaking is just trash, these are the movies we need to point out to reinforce this. And this is from a director who has made some of the best popcorn trash in the Marvel Universe. Like, Ragnarok is brilliant. Uh, he directed episodes of The Mandalorian. He's got one of the best scenes in probably Star Wars history, <laughs> one of the episodes of Mandalorians he's ever he's directed. So let's get on to some specifics. No, there's nothing really I can't say that I didn't like about this film. There's one nitpick, but I'm giving it a pass. I'm going to say my nitpick and I'm going to defend it. There's a lot of usage of anachronistic music in this so like for example well this is not really sports the opening song is i want to hold your hand by the beatles but it's sung in german and it's layered over pieces of propaganda footage you know from world war ii but it fits it fits a lot of the theme all this what it's trying to set up it works and that's why like i say like this is art these don't fit when you think about them logically. It works within the aesthetic and that actually enhances the beauty and the art of the piece. That's about it for negative. I mean, I'm sure someone probably doesn't like this film and they could probably rag on about how it's the worst piece of shit ever made, but my God, this was so beautiful. The acting throughout was amazing. The kid who plays Jojo Rabbit, I mean, God damn it, he carried the entire film. Tika struck gold with that and his uh fr and his friend Yorkie they are both I wouldn't be surprised if these both of these kids have a career after this that's going to be last for a while as long as I don't you know throw it away on some other crap but they both do a great job on this the entire cast um is just utterly brilliant with possible my favorite Sam Rockwell uh <laughs> <laughs> characters he's ever done and he's a Nazi. I even like Rebel Wilson and I've never really liked Rebel Wilson. She was really good in this. Alfie Allen who always plays an asshole he plays a Nazi and he's you know it's that thing where if you know I think he's trying to shed that image but he, he plays such a doofus and you kind of get this you kind of get this are they or aren't they banging the vibe between him and Sam Rockwell and it's played brilliantly this is probably one of the, i think the best scarlett johansson performances i've ever seen as well and i know i'm just probably not like, used to like the marvel stoic hero but she shows a lot of humanity and oh god i'm i'm blanking on the jew girl's name in this i i literally can't remember she was incredible in this that's it all the all the um the performances in this movie were brilliant um i think Tika is one of those guys who really knows how to draw out a really great performance and knows the beats to get some really great comedy and, you know, also the, the drama and the gut punch. I was crying by the end of this film. It was really impactful. Um, even Tika's... <laughs> Tika as Adolf Hitler. <laughs> this is a movie that would be great to analyse um, in regards to... Um, you know, just in case, like costuming and things like that, where you can kind of see the as Jojo goes through his journey, you can kind of see like that facade of his Nazi costume start to slowly kind of strip away. You know, just those things like that, and you can even see that reflected in his relationship with Adolf. And it's also the fact of Adolf Hitler. I'd say it's in the Mel Brooks kind of tradition of this is not a character you're meant to empathize or old like. He is a pure caricature. He is pure lampoon. Nothing Hitler says or does in this movie is meant to make you go, oh, that guy's sane. It's, it's amazing. It's truly beautiful. I don't like, I don't really particularly like giving ratings except when I'm on podcasts, but this is, this is a 10 movie. 
I I thoroughly enjoyed this, and I wouldn't I mind going and seeing it again uh, sometime very soon. I'm, I'm very annoyed that it took me almost two weeks to go watch it in the cinemas, but it's on very limited release in, a, in release in WA. It's probably going to be out of the cinemas by this week because it's a, such a great film. But we got you know we got so many screenings of Rise of Skywalker to go through. So fuck me that a movie this brilliant and gorgeous and well made is gonna be tossed out for that pile of fucking garbage that cannot even hold a candle to this kind of storytelling and I'm not gonna turn this into a Rise of Skywalker rant but it does kind of piss me off that that was um that was why we got we got you know Tika Watiti knocking out gold we got Ryan Johnson knocking out gold two of the best movies I've ever seen came out within the last six months and both of them would have made a much better episode 9 than JJ did. That said, rant over. I'm going to head off. This is going to be a short one because I am currently boiling. <laughs> I want to go home and, you know, get into something cool. And my phone just said my temperature is too high. So, 